Welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today I am very excited to be opening up Lion of Judah, which is the war for Ethiopia. It's from 1935-1941, so something very, very different. I've never played an Ethiopia war game. Um, I just picked this one up uh, at WBC, got a great deal, Compass was having a sale. Um, I think this one came out in 2017. This is a newer game. I want to say it was 2017. Maybe it was earlier. Maybe it was this year. It does not say. 2017 looks like. Yep, 2017. So, this is a, I think it's a single map war game, Hex Encounter, but it covers a topic which I don't know if I've ever seen an Ethiopia war game before. Now, if you watch the WBC wrap up, I said, Oh, this is probably the only Ethiopia war game. And then literally a week later, um, just this past weekend at Gen Con, I was looking through, I think it was the old S&T, or it was in the command, it may have been in like the general or strategy and tactics. One of those had, a, had an Ethiopia war game in it, covering this same topic, and I thought to myself, well, there it is. Egg on my face, but this kind of, you know, Compass Games is kind of be a bumper title, which I'm really excited for something that's at least flavor-wise, very different. And so this goes through a lot of the colonialism, pre-war. Um, this is, it's the Italians going to take Ethiopia, and then kind of a, I believe it's a, kind of a British liberation, so to speak. So, I, I think that's what it is. It's kind of, there's two big scenarios. It's kind of two games in one cover the same topic, so. Opening up the game, this, Seriously, iconic rule book. These, these, it's just so beautiful. Such a different style. And this is really a World War II era game. We got this big warrior on there with, with a rifle bayonet attached. Just the vibrant colors make this game appealing. It's part of what attracted me to it. Um, so this rule book is not particularly long, which is nice. 16 pages, including the back page, which is a full extended sequence of play, which we'll keep that out on the table when we play. Let's see, yep, and all of this is rules. So 16 pages of, really 15 pages of good rules here. Lots of pictures. And the text is dense, sure, but there's still a lot of white space there as well, so not too bad. This should be a pretty easy one to pick up and learn. So that's nice, nice standard rules there. And the playbook is, let's see how long this is. The playbook's actually longer. It's like this, 22, 23, 24 pages. So this in here has uh, various setups for different scenarios, how to win and lose. This is a lot of text as well. Um, more scenario there. Because the two scenarios are played very differently, I think. They have a lot of different notes. And then the rest of this is play notes. So you've got probably 14 pages of setup and rules and different nuances to each of those scenarios. And then we've got a lot of different notes here, explanations, some history and bits and pieces, and a bibliography, which is nice. And then you've got this nice big colored setup for the 1940-41 to 41 scenario. So that's nice as well that they did that. Always like it when they do that kind of thing. So that's that. Looks like we've got a big old poster of advertising. Wow, this is huge. If you're ever interested in any of Compass's other games, here's all the current ones. <laughs> this side. That's the size of a map already there. So a lot of other games going on here. Montelamar, Crusader, I think Grant picked up Montelamar. A few other ones, Line of Judas over there. Fall of the Third Reich we've got, but not played that one yet. So a lot, a lot of extra tantalizing advertising here and on the back as well. I just picked up Guam, Saipan's an excellent game. These are great, huge, big games as well. A lot of stuff to look through that in my spare time. Maybe, maybe this giant post is not the most convenient way to do that, but could have done with a booklet or something to make it a bit easier. A couple of D6s, nice thematic red and green there to match the colors on the flag. And then we have some setup cards. So these are nice. This is 1935 through 36 scenario, and that's the 40 through 41 setup. So. You get nice full color. Again, I really like setup cards, especially when they're full color and they tell you all the hexes and where to put them, or at least the areas. And they've got the uh, reinforcements down here as well. That just that helps me to get the game played. I really enjoy those. 
Got a nice unit key here as well. Kind of describes all the different nuances of the different counters. One thing that I did notice that I am very excited for. Does this show it? Oh. There's a few. Hmm. Maybe we'll. Okay. On here, you've got these kind of the tribal warriors here. They have they have a question mark for their attack value. And so, so it's hidden. You don't know how well or if at all they're going to fight, basically. And the best part of that is it's not like, oh, it's hidden from the enemy. It's hidden from the owning player as well. The owning player doesn't know how well their guys are going to fight. It's kind of a hidden from both sides, which I think would be very interesting. Looks like we've got two identical blades here. Uh, some, some air support charts, air attack charts, availability charts. This over here. Prestige level. This is Ethiopian CRT down here. Terrain effects chart. A guerrilla recruitment table. That sounds cool. Force march table. And on this side, you've got normal CRT and then tribal faction set up as well there. And so you've got two of those, one for each player. This is random events. So at some point, I presume there'll be random events. And, yeah, so that's, okay, 35 through 36 scenario, 40 through 41 scenario. So there's a couple of different um, random events tables for each of the scenarios. And here are the units. All right, so we've got two counter sheets. So let's start with this one here. So you have an Italian units over here. I think, oh, well, oh I, don't, I don't want to mess that up, I believe, yeah, so these are Italian regulars, these are colonial regulars, which are part of, they're like Italian colonials, so, from like Italian Somalia, and other of their colonies all coming together and fighting, you got British forces here as well, you got the cool biplanes and things like that, you got tanks, so there's some different chits, bits and pieces, RPs, and the backs of those, you've got all the reduced units, things like that. Digging, what looks like trenches or field works, and then these are the completed side. And then we've got more of these units here. Um, these are, and let me qualify that. So these are the 1940 through 41 regulars for the Italians. This is the earliest scenario where they've got a lot more. This is the invading force. And there are a few German units, the German units, well, singular, These are this little mobilized one here. And then you've got some free French down here as well that help the allies. And the Ethiopians are, the, are these white markers here, all these tribal ones. And then they have some um, kind of more regular units here as well. And like I said, if you kind of look here, some of them have these numbers on, it looks like these leaders have numbers on it, but everything else are these question marks. And so you, have, you don't really know what you're pushing around, and then you flip over to the back, some of them are one, some are three and four, which are really good, and then sometimes you get yourself a sweet, sweet zero there, not what you want to see. Um, and so you might just come up to situations which are, you just end up kind of getting out of control for you. So that's, that's interesting and exciting at least. So I'm, uh, I'm excited to play this. These are great counters. Uh, very clear, very simple, very easy. I don't necessarily need a lot of bling to my counters. I just want it to be readable and usable. And those are definitely that. Uh, unit key, this is very helpful. This helps you sort out all those different colors and formations and things like that. So keep that very, very handy. And um, oh, they put a lot of the letters and stuff on there. So if you got down here, it says 2KAR. If you're like, what on earth is that? That's King's African Rifles. And there's 1KR, 2KR, etc. So, nice little summary of all the different acronyms there. Always a good thing to have. And last but not least, we have the map. And this is, uh, if you look here, this is a matte map. This is not glossy. It is a big paper map. This is a good heavy paper. What we're going to do is we're going to unfold this. Get it down here. Alright, 
Let's see if we can get this without the glare going on. But this is uh, got that, that sweet border at the top looks beautiful. That to uh, black, green, yellow, red. And here's here's the map. And I don't. It's kind of hard to see. Maybe this is a really nice looking map. It's a lot of brown. It might seem that way, but really, you've got this great map key down here and various holding boxes, which I always enjoy. But the the map itself. The, the terrain has actually got nice texture to it, the hexes are really big, and seeing how small those um, counters work compared to these hexes, you're going to have a lot of nice space, very vibrant blue for the ocean there. So that's, that's a really ni nice looking board, nice looking pieces. This is going to be fun and interesting to play around with and learn, so pretty excited for this one. This is the Line of Judah, the War for Ethiopia, and this is from Compass Games. Just came out last year. Let me see. That's, that was criminal if I didn't tell you who the designer was. So I don't know off the top of my head. Let's find the rules. Let's see. Who designed this? Hmm. Well, I don't know who designed this. Unless they're hiding it from me. Gotta be in here somewhere. I don't want to leave that person out. I wonder. Surely there's designer notes. Bibliography. Credits. Okay, the designer. Okay, here we go. Right in the back here. The designer was Javier Romero. I don't want to leave him out because this is great. And the uh, cover art's by Knut Grunitz and uh, Brian Miller. Also great, so pretty excited for that. They did a good job with this cover art. So, very excited for this. <laughs> lots of different colors, lots of things going on in this game. But I'm excited to get this one to the table just to, just to play around with something, frankly, entirely different from the stuff I played. So that's Line of Judah from Compass Games, and I've been Alexander from theplayers8.com. Thank you very much for tuning in.